This web clip summarizes research in my laboratory on the question, how does the hippocampus work? I am Howard Eichenbaum of the Center for Memory and Brain at Boston University. The way in which we pursue this question is to ask, how do neural networks within the hippocampus organize the kind of memories for which the hippocampus is essential? It turns out we know a lot about the kind of memory that requires the hippocampus, and we know quite a bit about the kind of information that hippocampal neurons encode. The challenge is to close what seems to be a missing link between the function of the hippocampus and the kind of information its neurons encode. So a wealth of studies, including in particular studies in amnesic patients like the famous patient HM, have shown us that the hippocampus is absolutely essential for episodic memory. And we know from Endel Tulving's introduction to episodic memory that the organization of knowledge in the episodic system is temporal. Within each episode that we record and can remember, one event precedes, co-occurs, or succeeds after another, and a series of events composes each memory. On the other hand, studies that involve recording from neurons in the hippocampus have identified that those neurons seem to encode spatial organizations. So, in this illustration at the bottom, as an animal wanders around an open environment, cells fire when the animal passes through a particular location independent of other behaviors going on, or what the animal's doing, or what time it is. So the cells seem to organize what is often called a cognitive map of space, a spatial organization, rather than a temporal organization. How can see we reconcile these two views? Or in particular, we need to answer the question, can the hippocampus tell time and code information about temporal organization independent of its role and spatial organization. We asked that question by putting animals into this interestingly shaped maze in which he performs a spatial alternation task. He starts a trial, for example, on this red path by coming from his left side, going up the stem of the maze, and then alternating to the other side, to the right side, coming around and getting a reward. And then it starts on the blue path from his right side, up the middle of the stem, alternating to the left, and coming around and getting another reward, and so on, pursuing this task all one after another, left trials and right trials. As you can see, in the midst of running the maze, we've located a treadmill. So on each trial, the animal steps up onto the treadmill, gets a small reward, has to run in place for several seconds, and then can hop off the treadmill and complete the trial. The important aspect of this particular task is that while the animal's running in place, He's performing the same continuous behavior of running, and he's fixed in spatial location. So the only action of the time is that elapsed time is moving on, and we can try to find out if there's something in the neural activity of the hippocampus that seems to encode a temporal organization. Let me now take you into the laboratory and show what the experiment actually looks like. So here's our maze. Here's the treadmill in the middle of the maze. Here's the rat. He's about to step onto the treadmill. What you're going to see and here, as the animal performs the task, is the activity of three neurons, which I'll refer to as the pink neuron, the green neuron, and the blue neuron. As each neuron fires, we'll put a dot on top of the animal's head corresponding to the color of that neuron. And I want you to watch closely as the animal runs on the treadmill with his head approximately here to determine whether the head's position is constant and when the cells fire as the animal's performing the task. So here, let me begin the trial. Here the rat steps onto the treadmill, he gets a little water, and the treadmill starts moving, and the pink cell fires. It stops quickly, and the green cell replaces it. And then the blue cell starts to fire. The treadmill is now stopped, the animal will step off and begin to walk through space. Now these same neurons that can fire when the animal's running on the treadmill also fire at other locations. They are place cells at other locations on the maze. So there was the pink cell. And you'll soon see the blue cell also firing. So it has what we call a place field. Now the animal steps on the treadmill to begin another trial. We'll see one more. The pink cell fires first, followed by the green cell. the blue cell. The 
now the clock has stopped again. So if we record from a large number of these cells, we can plot the data from the entire population in this way, in which each of these cells' activity is plotted as a single row here. The peak of activity is the red dot. Blue represents zero firing rate. So this first cell, number one, fired just at the beginning. Cell two fired a little bit later, three a little bit after that, and so on down the line so that each cell fired at a particular moment in time, very much like place cells, fired locations in space. And so we call these cells time cells. Now the significance of time cells is really important for our understanding of how the hippocampus works in episodic memory. These data suggest that what the hippocampus does is use time cells and place cells to build a kind of scaffolding for memories, in which each component of the scaffolding represents a particular location in space and a moment in time. And the memories that occur are located at their moments and at their locations in this overall scaffolding framework. And this kind of mechanism might be exactly what underlies our capacity to encode and then retrieve the organization of memories in space and time.